The population in the United States and around the world is aging, which will have serious consequences to our community and society as a whole. Alzheimer's disease becomes more common as people age. Therefore, the number of older adults being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia worldwide is rapidly increasing, along with our rapidly aging society. Research is crucial for gaining a better understanding of this disease. After watching this video, you should be able to discuss the global aging phenomenon, identify differences in normal and non-normal brain and cognitive aging, distinguish challenges and opportunities in the field of aging research. Alzheimer's disease is one of the greatest challenges we face as a species, in first world countries in particular. And the reason for that is we don't die as rapidly of other diseases. We're living longer. The aging population actually globally and particularly in developed countries is rapidly increasing. It's expected that older adults age 65 and older will increase by as much as 1.6 billion globally by 2050. Furthermore, the percentage of people that are older is increasing. We're not backfilling it with new births. And so the burden on younger people that we will be facing in the next 20, 30, 40, and 50 years is considerable. In 2019, one in 11 people in the world were over the age of 65. In 2050, it is projected to be one in six people. This worldwide aging phenomenon can affect society in many ways, including younger people. It affects society in good ways and bad ways. So the good thing is that our elders are sticking around for longer. There's better health care. They're living for longer. We get to benefit from their experience. The bad thing is they tend to have more health problems as they age, which can create problems for the families and for society in general, trying to support this additional burden on the health care system. Older people may also need more personal care and young adults in the family may be recruited to help with that. What got me interested in Alzheimer's disease research was my grandmother. Um, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2010. I was about 15 years old. She was actually my caregiver growing up, so in 2010 roles were obviously reversed and it was very difficult for me and my family to watch her decline over seven years. Um, she passed away in 2017. I started studying and doing my research on the disease and decided to devote my life to it. As students, you should be aware of it. I guarantee none of you will escape knowing somebody that gets Alzheimer's disease. You will know somebody. In this section, we learned that the world's population is getting older. For example, in 2019, one in 11 were over the age of 65, whereas in the year 2050, one in six will be older adults. Young people will have to shoulder some of the economic and social challenges created by the aging population. Physical and mental health of the older population will be a large cause for these challenges. There are several health conditions that are more common in older people and less common in younger people. So the common health conditions that you're more likely to see in older adults is coronary heart disease, and that includes hypertension and stroke. In terms of metabolic conditions, you're going to see an increase in the prevalence of diabetes. And certainly from a cognitive perspective, uh, we're seeing a rapid increase in individuals with dementia and Alzheimer's disease as well. On an individual level, Aging can also affect the brain and structure connectivity. As we age, the brain connections are not as strong. There are molecular changes in the brain that will kind of modify the way the neurons or the brain cells communicate. What we do know is that the brain structure changes. We know that there is a loss of brain cells, which leads to shrinkage of the brain. And we also know that there's a loss of connectivity. So what that means is neurons are talking to neurons, but with that loss of connectivity at the synaptic junctions, we're seeing much less communication going on in the brain. 
These examples of brain aging can be grouped into normal aging. Cognition can also be affected by normal aging. So there are a number of different things that are going to be subtly changing as we grow older. We're going to experience a decline in how quickly we can process information, again because of the changes in the structure and the connectivity of the brain. It will be harder for you to learn new things, or for example languages, that's even harder compared to when you're younger. We're also going to see a decline in attentional resources, so it's a little bit more challenging for us to do dual tasks uh, during daily life. We may have to focus our attention more on one task than the other. So there are a number of different things that are going to be subtly changing as we grow older, um, even in healthy populations. Senility, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease are grouped into the non-normal aging process. Although these terms sound similar, they have very different definitions, as well as their cognition effects compared to normal aging. So senility or being senile, those are terms that are kind of old-fashioned terms, meaning someone is just having cognitive problems as they get older. They're not medical terms and they're not really used as acceptable terms anymore. Dementia and Alzheimer's disease, they are often mixed up, they're often used interchangeably, but they really are not the same things. Dementia is the broader term and Alzheimer's disease is the more narrow term. Alzheimer's disease is one type of dementia, but there are other types. Other types of dementia include vascular, mixed, Lewy body, frontotemporal, and others. Dementia is a cluster of symptoms and not a disease a progressive loss of cognitive function to the extent that activities of daily life are affected. Dementia symptoms are present in Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is most often marked by problems with memory, so especially in the beginning, you know, shorter term memory. So someone might remember something from a long time ago, but might not be able to track a conversation that they're having now. So it could range from forgetting to turn the stove or the oven off to forgetting where they are. There's also a behavioral aspect of the disease in which Alzheimer's patients become depressed. But depression is a little bit of a gray area because we are not sure whether depression itself is caused by the disease or is it because the person is feeling depressed due to the fact that they are aware of the symptoms that they're exhibiting in terms of cognitive problems. We may see um, irritation, penchant towards being a tad more angry. Uh, they're going to have a lot more difficulty understanding episodes that have occurred in their lives. It's important to distinguish this natural function of aging from a disease process which not only accelerates that degradation, but it does so in unique ways. So it's okay to forget where you put the car keys, or whether you close the refrigerator tightly when you leave for work or school. But it's not okay to forget who your wife is. There's a big difference. Or to not be able to construct a grammatically correct sentence, or draw a picture of a clock face. Those are symptoms of a disease process that's dramatically changed your capacity to think and express yourself. Alzheimer's disease can affect different brain regions, the most common being the temporal, parietal, and prefrontal cortices, and the hippocampus. There are two characteristic abnormal markers in the brain that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. In Alzheimer's disease, there are two hallmarks that are typically observed in the brain, which is beta amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. For individuals who have Alzheimer's disease, we're going to see that to a much, much larger extent than it is in individuals who have a healthy aging brain. In this section, we discussed, in normal aging, there may be natural loss of brain cells and mass and strength of brain connectivity. Brain changes can lead to dementia, including Alzheimer's disease dementia. Patients with Alzheimer's disease dementia will show symptoms of behavioral and memory issues. There are two characteristic abnormal markers in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. As a student, you have an opportunity to participate here 
Because the technology is evolving so rapidly, and even in the last five years, we've made enormous progress in our ability to witness very small things inside a living human being, in their brain. You have the opportunity to participate in that trajectory of an ever-improving technology, the ability to look at small things or very rapidly changing things. And so participating in this, even as a young person, I think is rewarding, it's enriching, and it's fun. Helping to control the human condition. You're all gonna get old, <laughs> hopefully, because the alternative's not that good. But getting old presents a lot of health challenges and being able to understand things in biology using extraordinarily sensitive technology is an opportunity that frankly shouldn't be missed. What I like best about this kind of work is after getting your hands dirty and spending hours on end on certain experiments, um, you know, getting the results and getting interesting data and ultimately getting a publication out of it is really, really rewarding. Besides that, also, you feel like you're getting one step closer to finding a cure or, you know, you're giving your all into finding the cure or you're just helping just the progression of, of finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Separate fact from fiction. Don't buy into the aging stereotypes. And if you really want to understand the older adult, find every opportunity you can to actually work with older adults, connect with older adults, and I think any perception that you might have had before you met them will change considerably after you have. In this section, we discussed with the projected increase in the aging population, there will be challenges, but also tremendous opportunities to better understand Alzheimer's disease and the aging brain. There are exciting and rewarding opportunities for students to become involved with Alzheimer's disease and cognitive aging research. Everything about who we are, how we behave, how we think, how we remember, how we express ourselves, everything is mediated by brain, everything. And I think it's really, really important for us to disseminate correct information about the aging process. Talk about its heterogeneity as opposed to all older adults are likely to contract um, Alzheimer's disease. But I think it really is important for young people to get the information that they need so that they really have a better understanding of what the aging process really entails.